somebody. Welcome to Collective. All right, all right, all right. So um, we've had a crazy summer, right? We've had camp. We've had rally weekend, heart and soul. And then somewhere in the middle of all that, we released a worship EP. It's crazy. And so, man, it's been incredible. Hey, if you're watching online, we love you. We miss you. We wish you were here. But tonight is about all these guys in the room. Are you ready for this tonight? All right. Let's get started in five, four, three, two, one.
as we were praying for the night, we were praying through the night, praying for every single student in this room. There's some of you that are waiting for the perfect moment. This is it, tonight is it. Tonight is the night you can say yes. Whatever it looks like, we say nothing matters more. So Father, we lift our hands as a sign of us saying, I give up to my own ways. Father, and even if we have to do this every single day, we surrender to you. We love to surrender to you no matter how many times we have to do it. We say yes to you, Jesus. Nothing matters more. Father, we just want you, but not just for tonight, but we just want you in our lives. More of you, Jesus, less of me. Father, will you continue to reveal yourself tonight? Continue to move tonight? This is just the beginning, Father, so we are open to your word. We are open to whatever else you want to do tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in our midst. Thank you for always being faithful to meet with us. Thank you for your promise, Jesus, that when we seek you, we will find you. So as we seek you tonight, we know and can be confident that we are faithful to find you. So Father, with hands lifted high, we say we give you our worship. You are worth it, Jesus. We love you. And everybody said, amen. take us a little bit because there's a lot of us but as you do say hey to your friends say hey to your people high five some new people Timers, you guys are incredible, but we want to shout out a special group of people. Where is City Hope College at? Make your way on the stage. City Hope College. This is City Hope College. college. We got They're some crazy. new students coming up here, some old students. Let's go, Lots of babies. Let's go. Hey. That's oh, crazy. My, what are you with? Oh, if you goodness, don't know, no. oh my goodness, what just happened? If you don't know, me and Brian and Hunter Graham, we all went to CAC. We did, it's man. Some of the school. best years of my life were in City Hope College. KB would have gone with all of us if he was born in our era, but um, he would have been there. <laughs> That's dirty. He would have been That's there. crazy. That's I can crazy. say that because I love you. Um, hey, but <laughs> just for you guys who maybe you felt like God called you in a ministry at camp this year, maybe you just have an interest in City Hope College at all. They're going to be set up in the uh, outside of these before we go to after party tonight. I just... It's going to be fun. Somewhere out Funnel there. Funnel cake. It's going to be fun. Giant thing of doom So if you're interested in City Hope College, find CHC booth after this. They'd love to talk to you, get you a little more information for that. It'll How be many, great. Do we have anybody, any, any first-timers first in the First-timers, where are you at? I know we I have know a lot. I know there's a ton, because I saw that list. We actually... We have a little giveaway. We actually have a giveaway for somebody in the room who I brought what it is. the most first-timers with them tonight, and so some of you guys are super hyped to see who got this. Christian, do we have 
A we winner? Have, right. Are the results in for this? There can only be one winner. I guess there's two winners for this one. And what, are they, kind of. and what are they winning? What's the, what's the big prize this we're This is going to be a prize pack so you and your friends get a chance to go bowling, arcade. Just a, a great fun time for you to hang out. But um, let's get a drum roll going real quick. Come drum on. Drum roll. The winner for them and all of their friends for the prize pack is... Chris! Timers. Nine? That's it. That's crazy. Nine first timers. That is crazy. Hey. Good job. We are so proud yeah. of you guys. We'll be uh, in contact. Make sure that right you guys there. go to the first timers lounge before the after party tonight. They're gonna get some information uh, for you guys and get y'all yes. set up. I think we got some more. We have more. We We're just giving give away some away. stuff tonight. If y'all are all this one's gonna be fun. Away, Okay, this was yeah. our social media one, so we're giving away a JBL wireless speaker. So you're like, brah, 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 walking through the halls of school. Everybody's gonna love you, blasting all, all the cool music. But, it's um, waterproof. It's waterproof. Bass is thumping. It fell over there, but we caught it, so it's fall proof. It's everything. Everything proof. And so let's get a drum roll real quick. Our social media winner, favorite summer memory. Palmer Massey. Palmer Where Massey, you at, buddy? Palmer Massey. Come grab this thing, boy. You can come grab come it. Come get this right come. here. I'm going to throw it to you. All right, no, I'm just The box opens up. Watch out. Yeah, it Don't opens up, it so be him. careful. Well, Y'all hey, give it up for Palmer give real stuff quick. Away. Hey, Mom if you just want some merch, go ahead and raise How your hand. How many of y'all wanted some stuff, you but you didn't merch. get anything yet? We got, Let's do some I need some people standing up, way in the back over here. Let's go. I got pickleball elbow. Oh, my goodness. What do we got? All the way in the back, okay? We got one more. One more. We got one more. Hit her in the head. Hit her in the face. Who's the loudest? I think we got, we got the way in the back back there. Let's see. We oh, love it. almost. We love you guys. Hey, we've done so much this summer, but it doesn't end here. If you're not coming to youth nights consistently, please come. It's a great time. It's a, it's a great chance to learn more about Jesus in community. And the, the greatest thing about Youth Nights is honestly our small groups. You guys get to meet people your own age, some leaders that can help talk you through some things they're going with. But man, Youth Nights are just fun. They're like awesome. this is only a taste yes. of City Hope Youth. And so make sure you guys are at your campuses next week for Youth Nights. It's gonna be amazing. Yes, and the party's not done. We have something special for you. And so we have a special friend who came all the way here from, from Trinity, Florida. And you know, Florida people, you, you gotta be careful. You gotta watch out for them. Like, if you know somebody from Florida, you know what I'm talking about. You ever see the, the Florida man robs bank, slips on banana peel, gets eaten by alligator, like all that type of stuff? And actually, you're actually from Florida. I'm so from you Florida. Have a first-hand so, yeah, account it's of a, a lot thing. of these stories. But tonight, it's going to be Florida man comes all the way to City Hope Church and rocks the house with the Word of God. So let's stand on our feet and let's give it up for Pastor Kyle Rogers. So good. I want you to high five somebody next to you. Say, hey, yeah. let's do this. Let's do this. So good. Hey, I want to just take a quick moment at the very beginning of my message tonight. And uh, I am led by an incredible pastor and Pastor Q back in the Tampa Bay area. And so it's really easy to be able to see great leadership in front of you. I know he may not be here, but can we just give a big hand clap for Pastor Trey and the incredible team here at City Hope? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Uh, he's put together an amazing team, and I'm, I'm here tonight because KB brought me in. Y'all love Pastor KB or what? That's my man, 100 grand right there. And I want to take a quick moment also and just give a big shout out to all of our campus student pastors. Come on, Brian and Hunter and Christian. Absolutely, absolutely. And I last but never not least, can we just give a big shout out to all the volunteers that make nights like this happen, all of our groups. So good, so good. Somebody say this with me. Say, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. That's right, locked in and leaning in. Hey, I brought a picture of my family with me. I just wanna show you my beautiful family really quickly. Uh, they're putting it up on screen, come on. That is my incredible wife, Danielle. 
We've been married for 12 years, y'all. Yep. Those are my good looking and incredibly smart kids. Savannah, she is seven and in the second grade, and she is the mayor of her school. There is everyone there that she knows, and she talks to him every day. And that's my little dude, Kyrie. Come on. Absolutely. Yep. He is three, and he wakes up in the morning ready to tackle me and tackle life. Any morning people in the house? Any morning people you love the morning? All right, cool. Anybody like Jesus wakes me up at 9.30? Come on, somebody. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I love it. We're going to have us some fun tonight. We're going to have us some fun tonight. The fun part about being a parent Uh, for me, fun part about being a parent is we're in this season of life right now where our kids ask 127,799 questions a day. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's usually the question, why? Daddy, why? Daddy, why? Daddy, why? So I'm answering questions all day, and sometimes they come up with some random information. And I don't know about you, sometimes I have to ask them, who told you that? You ever have somebody, like, ask you something really random, and you have to look back at them and go, hey, who told you that? Like, I know I'm in the great state of Alabama, and so uh, I know better than to say Roll Tide or War Eagle, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. (laughs) But I think we all can agree on one thing. Somebody say one thing. That every time the Florida Gators lose, all of heaven rejoices. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so the question, who, who, to, who told you that? Who, who told you that? And, and tonight I just want to take a couple of moments with everybody in the room and everybody watching online just to look at that one simple question. Who told you that? So many of you are in a really fun season of life right now where you're starting to get more responsibility. You're, some of you, how many people drove here tonight? You drove here. Come on, mad respect to you. Absolutely. You, you drove. You got here in one piece. Yep, the car might be missing a tire, but you got here in one piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun season of life. Uh, where's all the, all the middle school students at? Make some noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mad love, mad love, because you all are navigating probably life's most difficult season in being in middle school. Uh, Where are the freshmen at? Freshmen, are you in the house? Yeah, yeah, thought so, thought so. Sophomores, you in the house? Yep, juniors, you in the house? All right, I think that covers it, right? Is the class of 2024 in the house? <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. So here's the thing, the longer you live and the more that you get involved in life, the more you're gonna gather a lot of information, a lot of information. We, we have mobile devices at our disposal every moment of every day. Uh, if you don't have a phone, your friend's got a phone. If you can't use yours, you're gonna use theirs, right? Like we, we have the opportunity to learn all the time, but in all of our learning, I do wanna encourage you, in all of our learning about science and math, how many people love math? Yeah, yeah, five of us, okay, cool, fantastic. Um, Yeah, five five people. I'm going to tell you, when me and math broke up, because we used to go together and then we broke up. Me and math broke up when letters and numbers started going together. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you're learning. You're learning. You're learning. In all of your learning, though, I do want to encourage you with one thing. Somebody say one thing. One thing. Yeah, it's this. First thought of the night. Be careful when choosing the voices that you allow to influence the way that you see God. Somebody say he went there early. Yeah, yeah, be careful when choosing the voices you allow to influence the way that you see 
God. I grew up in church. Any church kids, just wave a hand at me real quick. Okay, you, you grew up in church. I grew up in church. My, my parents uh, were pastors and are pastors, and all that means is I've had a lot of bad communion wafers. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever have communion and, and you just weren't sure if that was a wafer or a styrofoam cup? Come on. Yeah, you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, holler at a brother when you see him in the street. So, uh, but, but all throughout life, I've come to a spot where with all of the information that I've gathered about God, not all of the information was accurate. Some people would say that God was angry with me and if I did something wrong, and so you'd live under fear as if I got something wrong, God would get rid of me. Some some would say that God is cool with you doing everything. Just do whatever you feel, when you feel, how you feel, and God just forgives you for it. There's so many different perspectives on who God is, but I just want to encourage you tonight in this room and watching online just to be careful who you allow to influence the way that you see God. And And if you're not sure what that means, it's simply this. Ready? Keep the right voices at the right volume. Yeah, just look at somebody next to you. Say, that was for you. That was for you. That was for you. Yeah, yeah. Have some more fun. Turn around behind you. Tell them, that was for you too. That was for you too. That was for you too. Yeah. Uh, Keep the right voices at the right volume. Now, Now, this wisdom... This, this wisdom is as important to us following God as the very beginning of time. We've seen the book of Genesis where God speaks to something that wasn't, and although it didn't exist the moment before he said it, when God said, let there be light, I grew up in the 90s, so I'm going to say it like I know it, Woo, there it is. Uh-huh. And so, so when this takes place, God begins to create everything that we still get to enjoy today. He takes five days of creation to prepare for his greatest gift that he gave to the world. His greatest creation, his greatest creation, although we love uh, our dogs and we love the little fishies in the deep blue sea, uh, we could have lived without cats because cats, they're... Any cat people in the house tonight, any? All right, keep your hands up. If you're a cat person, keep your hand up. Everybody look around. Let's pray for them right now. Jesus, we ask that you would do a work right now. (laughs) Heal them. Just just from the fish to the dogs to maybe a couple of cats to, to the things we get to enjoy. God created all of this in five days in preparation for day number six. And in day number six, he creates who? Adam. Shortly after that, he creates Eve, and he gives them the opportunity to experience all kind of joy and relationship with him. Every day, the Bible says, God would come down in the cool of the day, somewhere around the evening, and he would spend time having a conversation with Adam and Eve because he liked them. Isn't it good to be liked? Okay, seven people. I guess not. Uh, okay, okay. It's, it's good to be liked. It's good to be cared about. It's, it's good. I like picking up the phone and, and calling my wife. And when I call her, she goes, hey, babe. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, I think she likes me. <laughs> It's, it's, it's good to be liked. I, I come home from work and my, my two little chicken nuggets, Savannah and Kyrie, they, they come running to the door to greet me because they what? Like me. They, they like spending time with me. And, and, and God would spend time with Adam and Eve because he what? Liked them. He loved them. He couldn't get enough hanging out with them. But then there was, there was this beast that was in the Garden of Eden, the very beginning, very beginning, opening book of the Bible. And this this beast is known as the serpent. And he seemingly had a negative response for everything that God said was best. 
God laid out creation for Adam and Eve and gave them the opportunity to have unfiltered access and relationship with him. And he drops a tree in the middle of the garden and says, you can partake of everything that you see around you except for one tree, and that tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But, but you can have everything else, you just can't have this. If you take a piece of fruit from this tree and eat it, you will die. Yeah, it just felt good to say, right? You will die. <laughs> and isn't it just like Adam and Eve and us and every human being that's ever walked this planet that the thing you tell us not to do is the thing that we want to do. Sometimes we'll do. The serpent that's in the garden slithers its way on up. Come on, do that with me. Just slithers its way on up. Some of y'all enjoying this. Slithers its way on up. And when he gets there, in Genesis chapter 2, God says you will what? Surely die. But in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent says you won't what? Die. I just want to pause here for a quick moment and point out to each one of us in this room and watching online, this right here, that when God gives a command, it's not a suggestion. He's not trying to keep us from experiencing the best of life. He just wants us to experience the best of life inside the boundaries that he knows will keep life safe and healthy. But the enemy comes along and says, hey, I know God said that you're gonna die if you eat a piece of the fruit, but I just came to let you know, he's just talking it up. He's just kidding, you're not gonna die. This shows us from the very beginning that the enemy of our lives and the enemy of our souls will always try to convince us that the consequences of sin are not as great as God promised they would take us. If I could say it like this, sin will always take you further than you want to go. It'll leave you somewhere you never intended, and you'll wonder why your life fell apart. It's because simply put, when God gives a command, it's not a suggestion. He's, he wants you to experience life, but he wants you to experience life in, within the boundaries that he set and knows is best to keep life and relationship with him the healthiest. This, these, these boundaries have everything to do with sex and sexuality, relationships. They have everything to do with how we approach our day in and day out life. They have everything to do with what we ingest and what we discuss. They have everything to do with the decisions that we make and the intentions behind the decisions that we make. And please understand that it's not new that something or someone would come along and try to get us to think that the way that God called and created us to live is actually holding something back from us. If anything, God doesn't desire to hold anything back from us. God desires to get something what? To us. What does he want to get to us? Peace, joy, joy, much different than happiness. Happiness comes and happiness goes, but joy is based on a person. Who's that person's name? Jesus, that means it lasts. We sing an old song at my dad's church that said, the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, so the world can't take it away. God, God, God has all of these things set up, and the enemy wants to convince us over and over again that the way that God asked us to live and the commands that he's given, they're not commands, they're just suggestions. You will die, God says. Serpent says, nah, you ain't gonna die. Then Genesis chapter two, Adam and Eve take a piece of fruit off the tree. We know that Eve eats it first, but remember who God gave the command to. It wasn't Eve, he gave the command to Adam. So if Adam would have just walked up, batted the piece of fruit out of his hand, we'd all be good. But Adam saw that Eve didn't die immediately, and so he also ate a piece of the fruit, and that's where sin entered into the equation by way of disobedience. 
And scripture says this in Genesis chapter two, verse 25, it says that they, Adam and Eve, were both naked but felt no shame. That was before the fruit. But after they ate the fruit, the response to God, when Adam shows up, to, when God shows up to talk to Adam, says, I was afraid because I was naked. Adam, how did you know that something changed? You learned that something changed because you did something that I never asked you to do. You did the opposite of what I commanded. This happens day in and day out. Here we go, where God would tell us that we are made in his image. God says that we, we reflect his heartbeat and how he created us, but every day culture introduces, here's an image for you to try to live up to whether it's in your Snapchat stream or your IG DMs, whether it's something that gets introduced to you in your first period class, whether it's a conversation that comes across your ears in the locker room, or whether it's just the way that your family is currently set up as they're navigating through their own journey. I don't know where you found it, but God continually reminds us, you're made in my image. You are perfect the way I created you with all of your personality quirks and your interesting features about yourself, but yet culture constantly reminds us, here's an image, hope you can live up to it. It breeds a level of angst, so much so that six out of every 10 students between sixth grade and senior year in high school deals and struggles with some sort of anxiety. Why? Because it's impossible to live up to an image we were never created to be a part of. I'm not yelling at you, I just get passionate here because I never want you to fall prey to the thing humanity's been falling prey to since the very beginning. God said, this is best. And the enemy comes along and says, ah, are you sure? Are you sure he's not just trying to take something from you? Fun and experience. Are you sure that God actually said that? Leads me to this thought right here about the right voices that we have at the right volume. The right voices constantly communicate that God is a giver, not a taker. All throughout scripture here in Genesis chapter two and chapter three, every time God gives a command, he's showing that he's looking to give something. But every time Satan through the serpent has a rebuttal, he makes it seem like God's trying to take something. God is a giver. Satan wants us to feel like he's a taker, like he's trying to keep us from something when in actuality he's trying to get us somewhere, somewhere that is healthy, somewhere that is life-giving, somewhere that causes us to be able to fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for our lives. It's in this place now that in Genesis chapter 3, the scripture reads like this, the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they what? hid from the Lord their God among the trees of the garden. They hid. And God called to the man, Adam, and he asked a statement, or asked a question. He, he asked him what? Where are you? Please understand that this was not Adam playing hide and seek from God, like God couldn't find him. Like, oh my God, you ever play hide and seek with like one of your little siblings before? And they're like standing up on the bed and they've got the sheets over their head, but they're standing straight up. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't see you. Standing straight up on the bed with the covers over your head. All four foot seven of you. No, no, no. This is not Adam playing an eternal game of hide and seek with God. God is not asking Adam, Adam, where are you? Because God can't find him. God is asking Adam, where are you? Because Adam can't find himself. Where's he looking? Somewhere. He wasn't created to look. Where's he trying to find himself? 
somewhere that God said is not going to lead to the best. What does this have to do with you and I, Kyle? Here we go. There are often times in our lives where the identity crisis that we face is not as a result of the culture. It's as a result that we just didn't get our faces in scripture enough to find out who God said we were and what God said he created us to be. Please understand that what you repeat is what you remember. So if all you're repeating through your scrolling is what social media is telling you that you should become, then what you'll remember is I can never match the image that's projected to me every day. But if I repeat that God is for me, that God is with me, that I am his son, I am his daughter, I'm created in his image and he loves me. This will be what I remember. This will stop you from hopping into the arms of someone you weren't intended to be with. Hello? Trying to find your identity and someone to tell you that they love you. Let me just help you be really clear. You ready? They don't. Why? They don't even know how to love themselves. How do you know this? Because there's nothing about their lives that's showing fruit that they have a relationship with God to even understand what love, what is. Adam, where are you? (laughs) And Adam's next statement reminds me of myself and maybe, just maybe, it might remind you of yourself as well. The next statement, Genesis chapter three, verse 10, I was what? Afraid. So I hid. I was afraid. I was, hey, hey, Adam, where are you? I was afraid, God, so I hid. I was afraid. I was afraid you'd find out that I'm not perfect, God. Newsflash, he already knows. I was afraid you'd find out that I ate, took a bite from that piece of fruit in the middle of the garden that you told me not to. I know. I was afraid, so I what? Hid. And this is the deception of sin that just keeps getting repeated all throughout time and space. And I just came all the way from Florida tonight in hopes that at least 50 of us would grab a hold of this and remember that the lie of the enemy is that when you fail, you gotta go hide. When you fall, he doesn't want anything to do with you. You gotta go away from him. If anything, the moment that you fall and the moment that you fail is the moment that you've gotta run in the direction of the one who can fix the failure. I'm reminded, I'm reminded, yeah. I showed you my family earlier. I remember uh, just a couple years ago, uh, our daughter was in kindergarten and so she was starting to, to experience what it's like to be around different friend groups and, and all this different stuff. And so she was going through different changes and we're helping her navigate through it. And, and one day I'm, I'm in the house and I'm walking through our house and I go to open up their bathroom door uh, because I, I wanna make sure their bathroom is clean uh, and, and young kids, they know how to tear up a bathroom. Can I get an all yeah right there? Yeah, y'all know, y'all know. Some of y'all did it, just so we're clear. Uh, So I'm getting ready to go in in the bathroom and I go to to walk in, but the handle is locked and there's nobody on the other side of the bathroom. So that means that somebody locked the door and meant to do it. And there was only one kid at the time that was mobile like that. So I called Savannah, I said, hey, 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 hon. Hey, why, why is this door locked? And y'all know we're really good as kids at trying to divert a conversation. So she looked at me, she's like, oh my gosh, daddy, I love you so, so, so much. You're the greatest dad in the history of the world. Every time we go to Chick-fil-A, I just love spending time with you. I was like, I get it, number one with the lemonade, amen. But baby girl, why is this door locked? And she looks at me with the cutest little eyes and she goes, daddy, if I tell you, are you gonna be mad at me? I said, probably. (laughs) But I need you to let me know what you're trying to hide. So she says, Dad, I made a mistake and I didn't want you to find out about it. And that's why I locked the door. And I looked looked at her right back in her face and I said, babe, My number one goal as your dad is not to be mad at you. It's to help you. 
but I can't help you if you're always hiding from me. I can't help you if you're hiding what happened. And can I stop right here just for a moment and say, although it was Adam that got afraid and hid, I believe that I'm in a room tonight here at Collective with a group of students that go, I am tired of hiding. I'm tired of hiding behind shame. I'm tired of hiding behind sin. I'm tired of hiding behind guilt. I'm tired of hiding the stuff. And I just want to encourage you that the area of your life that you need God to heal you in, and I don't need to know what area of your life it is, but just know that God already does. Whatever area of your life that you need God to heal you from, he can't heal you in it until you stop hiding it from him. So tonight is your night to let him know what is behind the door. What are you trying to hide? Are there relationships that you've gotten into that you don't know how to get yourself out of and so you're trying to hide? I, I don't know what it is that you're trying to hide. I just want you to know that God doesn't want to beat you down or talk down to you or hurt you. He wants to heal you and help you. Will you just tell him what's behind the door? Because the longer that we live in the day and time which we are, we're finding ourselves in a space where there are things that we believe about ourselves or believe about God that is not what he meant for us to believe and it's not who he created us to be. Which leads me to the question that we started with. Hey, who told you that? Who told you that you were supposed to live this way? Who told you that you were supposed to live confused about who God created you to be? Who, who, who told you that? Who told you? that God was not for you, but that he was against you. Who, who told you that? Who, who told you that the family that you come from, you'll never be more than they are? Who, who told you that? Who told you that because there's certain things that run in your family that those things had to run in your life? Who told you that? I just came to encourage you tonight that the things that we have begun to believe that we're hiding from God, tonight is the night to say, I am done believing a lie. I am choosing to lean into the truth that God loves me, that God is with me, that God is for me, and that he has a perfect plan in mind for us. Yes, he does. I choose to believe that God has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, says God, and those plans are for good and not for evil. Who told you that God didn't have a plan? Baby, they lied to you, but tonight is the night to flip that thing on its head. Who told you that you weren't worth the love of God? Neither depth nor height nor things present nor things to come, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Who told you that you weren't the apple of his eye? Who told you that you weren't his greatest creation? Whoever told you that, they lied. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed, free to be healed, free to be delivered, free to walk in light, free to walk in love, free. Do you believe that this is the God that we serve tonight? Do you believe that in here? Yeah. just requires one thing. Somebody say one thing. One now say it like you mean to say one thing. One you got to come back to the one who loves you. You got to come back to the one who created you. Here we go. I know we live in a world where they say, hey, live your truth. Speak your truth. Do you boo. At least that's what I say where I come from. Come on. Here's the problem with that is that the truth that we subscribe to, when it's not the absolute truth that is God's word found in his book, it changes based upon our emotions and our experiences. And I don't know about you, I don't have time to believe a truth that is constantly changing because my life is changing. This world is changing. Relationships are changing. I need something that stays firm and is solid no matter what happens, no matter the day, no matter who comes in, and no matter who leaves. And students, I just
just want to let you know there's only one that stays the same. His name is Jesus. He's here. He's with us. He's for us. If you believe that, can you stand to your feet all over this room? Can you lift up your hands? Can you lift up your voice and let him know I'm coming back to you? I'm coming back to the one who loves me. I'm coming back to the one who's with me. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Come on, lift your hands and your voice. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you, team. Yeah. I just want to give you an opportunity. We just sang a line in the song that said, no more going through the motions. If we believe that revival is here and revival is now, then revival starts with us, and that starts with one decision. Somebody say, one decision. Keep the right voices, the right volume. There's only one voice that matters the most. What's his name? In a minute, I'm going to give you a chance to be able to pray a simple prayer of commitment. And all that matters is that with everything on the inside of you, you believe every word that comes out of your mouth. And scripture says you will be saved. If you've already prayed this simple prayer of commitment, I just want you to pray out loud with us because it's never God's desire that anyone would feel left out. So with every head bowed, with every eye closed in this room and watching online, would you just simply pray this prayer? Say, Jesus, I need you. I tried on my own and I failed, but tonight I make you Lord of my life and King of my heart. I hand you my sin. I receive your forgiveness. I hand you my life. I receive your love today and every day to come. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.